Firstly, a deep honor and pure joy, celebration for commons, I guess. Second thing is because of Lynn's name attached to this award, it's going to be very close to our hearts. And one thing that Harini missed saying, I think we are going to dance with Lynn tonight. Thank you. and thank you to the University of Gloucestershire uh, for nominating us. Lynn clearly was a phenomenal influence, far and wide. And one of the attributes of her that I found so wonderful was the fact she was always an optimist. She was never got down. She was always there to solve problems. She believed in people and their ability to achieve. Anything was possible. And as a campaigner, that's a spirit that I really admire, because campaigners must never be got down. We do have to believe that we can do it. Lynn recognised that symbiotic relationship between scholarship and practical action. The Open Spaces Society feels a great bond with her and her legacy, because for 150 years, since mid-Victorian times, we have been campaigning for the Commons. We have been carrying out direct action. And when you see that lovely video that Anna has made, you'll see the graphics of the direct action. 1866, we were out there on a common near London, pulling down the fences that have been put up by a landowner. So we know about direct action, but we also know about collective action. And in our role to protect the commons, we campaign and champion, we advise, and we collaborate. And we are very pleased that a new organisation has been established in the UK, the Foundation for Common Land, which brings together the interests of commons. And we are pleased to be a part of that. And we are pleased to be a part of IASC, and we really hope IASC can embrace the practitioners and the collective action people. I would just like also, because I'm here in Japan, I would like to pay tribute to two Japanese scholars, scholars of the commons, Professor Hiromatsu and Professor Kaino, both of whom were members of the Open Spaces Society. And that is a lovely link to have with Japan. So we recognize the role of scholarship in supporting, informing, assisting collective action. And in Lynn's memory, we will certainly carry on with our fight, with our working with others to ensure that our commons are kept open and free for all to enjoy. Thank you.
uh, for a community. You know, in Mexico, thousands of trees are planted every year and they, they get lost. And so we, we were um, looking uh, for ways for this to be more than just a simple way of getting cash and a handout for the, the, um, the, the peasants. And um, we, this got us into thinking uh, we should understand the way common lands are managed in Mexico. After all, um, over 50% of the land in Mexico is owned by uh, small communities. And, and, it's, and in doing this, we discovered this uh, tremendous world of self-regulations uh, in, in, the, in the communities. And um, this uh, uh, fascinating world, uh, there were many regulations, uh, uh, very complex, and so uh, we uh, started a workshop where we invited about a dozen uh, authorities from the communities to talk about their regulations and their effectiveness. And, and, um, uh, and um, we, um, what we found was that after the workshop, uh, people went back to their communities and in a very short time, some of the communities had changed a rule or two uh, from the, what they had learned in the workshop from other communities. And so we were um, writing about this experience, and that is when Leticia introduced us to governing the commons. And this was very exciting for us, because it made us realize that what we were um, finding in this remote region of Mexico was not unique, that there were uh, many people in different parts of the world that were also doing self-regulation and finding uh, mechanisms to, to um, uh, manage the, the, um, the resources that they use for their livelihoods. And um, we, um, oh, that's the way we, we came to, to know it. And for us, uh, it was so important, we realized we were on the, on the right track, and we uh, realized that we had to put regulations in the center of our practice. And I think it was that decision that really made us uh, be able to flow with the communities, with the logic of the, of the communities, and that has allowed us to continue working in this region for uh, over 15 years now. And in this time, we have been witness to a great um, many changes in the communities. We have seen communities uh, change their rules from um, having to um, accommodate to a, a scarcity of water to now having much more water from all the work that has been done on their watershed. Uh, we have seen uh, communities take on management plans for their non-timber forest products. Uh, we have seen um, children um, be interested in their territory. And a whole series of, of things that uh, have happened over the years. And perhaps one of the most exciting things is, is that in the past few years, we have now have um, the, the, the relationship of trust that we have created with the communities has opened the door for uh, students from the UNAM and from UNISUR and, and from other parts to come and do, as part of their formal training, do, have, uh, do practice in, in this region. And in this way, we now have a constant flow of uh, emergent professionals coming here and uh, learning uh, about um, uh, a practice uh, with the communities right there in the land. And uh, we hope 